Cheers, Panasonic. I'm out of here. Good morning, YouTube. Today is a bright and breezy Friday morning, and I'm off to Panasonic to have a perv at their new camera. Hey! <laughs> Okay, arrived at Panasonic. Please note the following is very long and incredibly geeky. So don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, so a little bit of an intro. I'm yes. here with the marvelous Carol, who's invited me to Panasonic to have a look. Yes. At the sexy new Panasonic Lumix G9 and equally marvelous GH5. Yes, with the world's most beaten up 12 to 35 on it. I can see it. that. If you look underneath, you'll see this 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 particular is number one engineering sample for the 12 to 35. So this is the original 12 to <laughs> Wow, this is like vintage, vintage Lumix lenses. Yes, okay. So Carol, where do we begin with these two cameras? I think the first thing to say is that these are absolutely twin cameras at the top end of our range designed for pro photographers, pro videographers and the top level of amateurs who need really robust cameras Yes, that will stand anything, yeah. that will get bashed about. But they are twins, but they're not identical twins. Okay. And I, and I, you can tell I've been using that line a bit last few days, <laughs> can't you? <laughs> but it's true and it's yeah. the easiest way to describe them. Yeah. The GH5 is very much a camera for videographers mm -hmm. and filmmakers who need also to take stills. Yeah. It's a fantastic stills camera. But everything about the ergonomics of it, about the, the handling of it, the handling of the files is all really predicated around high-end video and its ability to get out unlimited high-end video. Yeah. So the design of it, the heat seal sinking, all of that is all designed to make flawless video that keeps going in all conditions. Yeah. But the G9 is for the stills photographer who needs to take video, who wants to take video. And that is really important difference. Okay. And it still has a lot of video capability. But a great deal of the research that Panasonic has done, and they've done a lot of research over the last two years really, more mm. than that, but certainly the last two years, with stills photographers, really because we were we were building a real, real audience and sales around GH. Yeah. But stills photographers kept saying, that's great, but I don't want all that video stuff. Yeah. I want a really hardworking camera that does what I want as a stills photographer, and it has a bit of video because I'm going to do some video. Sure. So the G9 is born out of all of that research. And that research is really important because it's meant that instead of just putting it into a GH5 body, they've completely redesigned the body. Exactly. Panasonic don't always make beautiful cameras, but they make very good working cameras and they listen. So this camera, the grip is completely designed yeah. around someone that's going to hold that camera all day. Yes. Yeah. Everything fits. I've got medium sized hands mm -hmm. and everything fits exactly where I need it to fit. My thumb fits underneath, my finger hooks around there, there are buttons here. Everything is within reach yeah. of my thumbs. And that is a working stills photographer. I'm holding the camera here and I want to switch modes. Everything is really where I need it to be. Yeah. It's different for a filmmaker. It's different for a vlogger, it's different for a video maker because very often, particularly once you get past vlogging, a lot of these cameras are rigged. Exactly, they're in a cage. So GH5 oh. is completely... <laughs> Nearly. There goes the vintage lens. <laughs> so, exactly, you're, no, you're yeah. absolutely right. So the whole premise around the design of the body hmm. is more around a camera that's going to be used in a different way. Sure. Whereas this, many, many stills photographers are going to handhold this it's for going to be in hours. hours it's that yeah hours and hours and hours 
So it needs to be. So that it's a much grippier material. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. I mean, much grippier material. Not to say this is uncomfortable <clears throat> no. by any means. It, it, no. it's you know, it feels perfect. Yeah. But the then... hand grip in here yeah. is much deeper. It really is, isn't it? Um, it has a much more pronounced ability to rest on your finger and your thumb there. So much greater ability to do all those things to just from the point of view of someone holding it for hours. Mm. And I think some of the reaction I've had over the last two weeks as I've been out with it, yep. with people, is that as soon as I put it into their hands. That was it for me. <laughs> yeah. Because when I had a little play with yes. it in Jessup's, yes. there was a pre-production model. Yes, this is also a pre-production, I have right. to say. So we need to, I need to make sure that you know that. Okay, pre-production. <laughs> there are bits of this that really don't work. Okay. <laughs> it's empty inside. Yeah, no, not quite that. But there are bits of the functionality that are not stuff. quite there yet. As soon as I picked it up, out. That was the immediate yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I always say a camera is, is it's much more than a camera. Absolutely. You, you'll know yeah, that as a photographer. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. on spec, on paper, it can be the best camera in the world. Yeah. But as soon as you touch it, yes. you will know, oh, wait a sec, there's something yeah. missing. Because yeah. it's almost yeah. that spiritual connection or some sort of connection you have with your camera. Yeah, absolutely, completely. And, and, and as soon as I grabbed this camera, I was like, yeah, wow. Yeah, wow. It and just, uh, even, you know, now... Yeah. It, it's because I think it has to, you will only use tools are there to be used. These are tools. Yeah. But they are also how you express what's going on in your head. Absolutely. And if and if that tool isn't comfortable, uh -huh. you're just not going to use it. And and I used to sell cameras a long time ago, and one of the things I would do is where someone would come in and they go, Oh, I don't know, I've looked at all the specs. I go, Well, hold them just in your touch hand. It. Yeah. Pick it up. It's so does true. Does the dial move it's the so way true. you want it to move? If That's it does, so take that camera. They'll both do exactly the same thing. Yeah. Before we get into any specification, mm. the whole thing around this is around what a stills photographer needs. One of the biggest things is this LCD. Yes, the LCD. <laughs> now, have you ever shot much on a traditional SLR camera? No, no. I haven't. Yeah, so for people like me who learned on traditional film cameras mm. and then came into traditional digital SLR cameras. Okay. This LCD screen is just the best tool really? ever. Right. Because for me as a stills photographer, yeah. it was so fantastic to yeah. get that facility back. Get it back, And I right. hadn't realised how much I'd missed it until it was suddenly there again. This is definitely lighter. Yes, it is. And it's definitely, as a stills photographer, easier to hold. So for you as a, as a filmmaker, you've been using G80, haven't you? So, yeah. Yes. Recording on the G80 yeah. now, yeah. which has been an, an absolute workhorse. Yeah, yeah. The obvious kind of upgrade would be the GH5, and a lot of yes. people on my channel say, get the GH5. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But like I said, as soon as I handled the G9, I was like... <laughs> And that's that's me saying that as a filmmaker, as a filmmaker I do yes. I do do photography, a yeah. lot of photography, professional yeah. photography. Yeah. But my heart's in video. Yes. yes. But I just couldn't get past yeah. Yeah. how well it felt. Yeah. How well it's been designed. Yeah. And on paper, there's yeah. a lot of similarities. Yes, there are. With there the are specs. a tremendous amount of similarities and some key differences. Sure. So we'll get into the key differences yes. around the videography yeah. first. Let's do that. Let's get Let's that bit that. out of the, the way because uh, that's, caused, yes. that's, that's caused quite a lot of conversations to happen. Yeah. One of the big pieces of feedbacks they'd had from stills photographers was, I love, all, I love the, 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 the professional, I love the professional side of it. I love the fact that I can take great stills. But I don't want all that video stuff. Don't need it. I don't need it. Sure. I might do some video, but I'm never going to do video at that level. Yeah. When they worked out that, they worked out that they could actually completely redesign the body. And that means that you have to lose some of the video capability. Mm -hmm. So this camera, if you look at under here, is much sleeker and slimmer. So this has does not have anywhere near the amount of heat sinking right. in it. Okay, that's interesting. So it would, if we were to put 10 bit through it, if we were to put 400 megabits through it, it would overheat. Right. 
<laughs> Which, what can and you do? And we don't want that. No. Because, it, firstly, eventually it'll damage the sensor. So it'll shut down the sensor before then, but you don't, you don't want to put, do that risk. Absolutely. And as Stills photographers very clearly said, they didn't want that. And we already had a very good unlimited recording camera on the market. Mm -hmm. There's no need to duplicate that. Yeah. So they were able to take, by taking out some of the video functionality, the top end of the video functionality, they were able to create a different camera. They could cool it down. They could cool it down. So this camera does do great 4K video. Yeah, it's a high it's, bit rate. It, so it goes up to 150 megabits. Yeah. Um, and it will do 4208-bit. Mm -hmm. 50p and 60p would be 10 minutes. But that is specifically because of heating. Because as soon as you get up into those higher frame rates, mm. and as soon as you get up into uh, recording for any length of time, the heat builds, the processor yes. speed builds. However, <clears throat> or, or, like on that note, yeah. myself as a vlogger and yeah. a filmmaker, yeah. shooting at a higher frame rate, yeah. 50p, 60p, yeah. I don't think I've ever needed to shoot no. over a few minutes. Yeah. When yeah. I'm vlogging, I hold the camera up, yeah. I say a few words, Absolutely. it's off. A Absolutely. bit of B-roll shooting. Yes, yes. And if, I, if I'm doing like uh, something that's going to take longer, I'll yeah. probably shoot 25 frames yes. anyway. Yes, yes. So I've never needed that trouble, that, no. that, that recording limit. No, so. and I think, I think, and I think this again speaks to the difference between these two cameras. Sure. So, um, because this is still a good video camera, it still has all the 4K capability, mm. you can still use it for video, but you can't use it for those long extended takes where it's locked off at the back of a church sure. or it's locked off at a conference. Yes. Um, and you, you wouldn't use it for that. You can, but you'd have to externally put it out. So that gets around yeah. those yeah, limitations. Yeah, you can do those. You can get around those limitations by HDMIing it out, and it has cool. full size HDMI to allow you to do that. It's amazing. It will still only put that eight, uh, out as eight bit. Yeah. Again, a lot of this is so that stills photographers had a lot of other things they could do by not including ten bit in any way. We don't have interfere hmm. with that. Yeah. yeah. So video, um, you have full HD video. And that's running all the way through to 30 minutes again. So all of the standard video, the other thing that it doesn't do, it does not do MOV format. Right. It only does MP4 and a bit of AVHCD. But MP4 is what 90% of the people we use. Exactly. So it only shoots in MP4. But it does have things like slow-mo. That's amazing. Yes. Because I didn't yes. expect yes. Although that they could, to be on there. This is a conversation I have all the time because it's called high frame rate, which high frame of course rate. is yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah. I think don't think of it as high frame rate. I think of it as slow-mo. Super slow-mo, yeah. <laughs> so it does that. It doesn't do the complete variable frame rate okay. that the GH5 does again. But it does do a selection of practical in camera slow motion brilliant so it does um 48 50 and 60 in 4k and 120 and 100 no 150 and 180 that's marvelous in um in full hd mm -hmm. so. something i really miss using the g80 yeah. is the super slow motion so when yes. i heard that was in yes there, yes and there's a headphone jack which, yes which isn't on there. certainly is the headphone jack here yeah okay we've got in here the hdmi but more importantly oh hello this is this hello. this is brilliant because actually this is something that gh5 uses are a bit cross about the usb charging the usb charging there and it is powering okay right so you okay. can actually power this from a usb as well that is incredible. So this the lifesaver, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So what is this little critter? I've noticed yes. this. Yes. And I'm like, what is that? Yeah, so it's another function button, but it's a function switch. Now okay. that allows you, at the moment, on this camera, which is one of the pre-production ones, it's currently set to silent or not silent shooting. Okay. But in what you can do is you can set it to do any of, any of the sort of functions where you have an either or. So you could set it up for different color spaces. So you could have switch one 
is on natural. Switch two is on black and white because you're going to do some black and white stills. Yes. Okay, and it's just and it's just switching between them. Okay. Um, you can make and. I haven't played with this much yet, but it looks as though you can make some quite sophisticated choices between those. That's amazing. Um, like the GH5, you can reassign all your function buttons just by holding them in. Um, That's so handy. It is. It makes a big difference. So, so it's equally as customizable. Yes, as the GH5. Yes, very much so. And again, that's because stills photographers have as many ways that they like to use a camera. Sure. Um, if you're a Canon shooter. By default, when you're on manual, aperture is at the front and shutter is at the back. Mm -hmm. And that's the Nikon way around. But you can convert them so that the shutter is at the front and the aperture is at the back. I need to know, learn how to do that because that's I'm doing it the wrong way around all the time. Like, why is this shutter? I want the aperture. <laughs> that's great. So, there at all, again, it's doable in GH5, but... Um, in G9, it just means that there are ways for people to do it. A Here's a question. Mm. I love the the dual dials. Yes, yes. I love it. And then I was yes. like, there's one on an LCD screen. What am yes. I going to do with that LCD screen? Yes. And then I've noticed this underneath tiny this... tiny little dial. So is that effectively yes. a second Add dial? It. That's, that's the second dial. That's ah. exactly what it's doing. So literally by yeah. moving those. Yes. That's so, your time lapse. Yeah. So you do a lot of time lapses. Yeah, time lapse. You're in. And in fact, that, can, that depending on in the menu whether you've chosen time lapse or stop motion, okay, that becomes your default position. So time lapse or stop motion, self timer, then six K post focus and mm -hmm. focus stacking, six K photo. Mm -hmm. Now these two are the interesting ones. Okay, these are there's the a new little, ones. You probably can't see that. There's yes, a tiny, tiny little, little one, one and a tiny little two. two. What's that about? So two, one first is they can be repurposed for for different levels of shooting, mm -hmm. but one by default is mechanical shooting. Okay. Mechanical continuous shooting, and when you're in there in number one, mm -hmm. if you're in AFS, it'll do twelve frames a second, mm -hmm. and if you're in AFC. It'll do nine frames a second. Mm -hmm. That's the same as the GH5. Mm -hmm. Which is amazing. Where it gets nutty okay. is in two. <laughs> in two, you get um, electronic shutter. Yes. Burst shooting. In AFC mode, it does it for 20 frames per second. Yeah. For up to 50 shots. Right. And in, a in AFS mode, mm -hmm. so we were talking about dancing earlier. So a dancer who is pirouetting. Mm -hmm. So staying in one sort of position, yes. going round and round, um, AFS mode will do 60 frames per second. Wow. But it will do it for 50 shots. Right. So just a bit less than a second. And then you can let go and go again, and you'll get a few more and a few okay. more and a few more. Okay. Um, it does have to buffer it. Yeah, of course. If you needed to have longer burst of a high frame rate, you can go to 6K photo or even 4K photo. Yeah. And 4K photo will give you 60 frames per second, 18 meg stills, but only JPEGs. Right. 6K photo will give you 30 frames, JPEGs. But this gives you raw and or JPEGs, depending on what right. you Right, so it can do raw and JPEG. Yeah, yeah. In fact, That's it can do both and write both. That's impressive. Wow. So that little, dark, those little two, and you can purpose those. So actually, the electronic shutter version you can even have as pre-burst. So if your dancer goes into a sudden pirouette okay. and you weren't expecting it, like that's going to happen. Luckily, dance, it's choreographed. So generally, you know they're about to do it. But so, You never know. Go with me for a second. Sure. <laughs> go with my analogy. Um, so they suddenly pirouette and you go, oh, push the button. It's already been recording, so it records the 15 frame. It, it then takes the 15 frames before you press the button and the ones afterwards. And that shoots RAW and JPEG. Right, right. That's So incredible. it's a really smart, and that is not on the GH5. It is actually, when you get down to the nitty gritty and you see these side by yes. side, and we're fortunate to have this yeah. conversation, yeah. you can really iron out the differences Absolutely. that Absolutely. aren't, so no. visible no on from first the from look. the specification and as the well specs. yes sure this is one of the other big differences one of the key differences hardware differences between the GH5 and the the G80 G80 G9 
<laughs> that is that on the GH5, the back screen is prioritized. And yeah. that's because filmmakers, quite rightly, need to... I can't remember how to turn it on. There we go. Are they the same screen? No, they're not. So the GH5 has a diff slightly different designer screen and it's larger. It's a it looks a little a bit little, bigger, it's yeah. It's bigger. But the GH, the G9 has the larger and more high-resolution viewfinder. R yes. And that, again, speaks to the fact photographers. that photographers yeah. are going to use it with their eye, with the viewfinder. I love looking on into the it. whole. And that little button that you've already discovered. Yes, that's changing the size. Which demagnifies the size. Yeah, yes. I quite like that as well. And that's actually helpful on two, two planes. If you're a glasses user like me, the viewfinder is now so large that sometimes it's a little difficult to see the edges of the viewfinder. So if, if you're you wearing want to glasses. See your yes. So if you want to frame your photo, mm. it's some, and, and a photographer like a filmmaker does, but you've got a bigger screen to do it on generally. Mm -hmm. If I'm in the viewfinder, I want to check I've not got something at the edge of my frame I don't want there. It's actually, with glasses, on this viewfinder now it's so large, it can sometimes be difficult to do that. If I push this button in, I create, a, it squishes in and I create a frame so I can then see the edges and I can check my framing. So it's actually, it's a neat little thing. So deeper into the specs, okay. the other things that are different, um, the high resolution mode. This is a, a really a stills photographer's thing. This is this 80 megapixel mode. Mm -hmm. And this has to be on a tripod. Mm -hmm. And it allows a stills photographer to create one frame of, or of a picture in yes. RAW and in JPEG, which has, is 80 megabits in size. And that means that they can do a number of things with it. Firstly, the resolution is much higher. Mm -hmm. So, by, and they do it by actually disengaging the image stabilization system okay. and reusing it to move the sensor in little half pixel shifts for eight images. Eight images. Eight images. Okay. And what that does, it, if you've got a relative, if you've got a static subject and your camera is static, it then stitches those together in camera and gives you an 80 meg RAW, an 80 meg JPEG, and you can choose to have the 20 meg RAW and JPEG versions as well. Okay, wow. So for certain kinds of photography, stills photography, this is a fantastic tool. Sure. It allows you to print enormous prints, for one. So the size of the wall prints. Secondly, if you are a landscape photographer and your environment is nice and still, you will resolve a massive amount of detail in mm. that. If you're an architect, an uh, architectural photographer, you'll get masses of detail in the building work. Um, even we played with it the other day for portraiture. And as long as your subject stays fairly static, yes. and you've got a reasonable shutter speed, you can do very high resolution, very detailed images, yeah. which you might then in RAW want to do things to. So it allows you some more cropping capability. It allows you more edit capability. So, okay. for, And that is a purely stills photographer thing. So other things that this does that the GH5, and, and over and above the GH5, Yes. First one is the image stabilization. Which we haven't talked about yet. <laughs> no. And I have been genuinely surprised at the difference between the two. Mm. Uh, GH5 <laughs> has five stop image stabilization um, and five axis, five stop, uh, up to 280 mil out. Yes. But filmmakers rarely are much less likely to use a very long lens. Okay. They mm -hmm. do. They do. There are occasions. But on the whole, filmmakers are tending, tend to stay on shorter lenses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Photographers, on the other hand, and particularly wildlife photographers and sports photographers, are on extremely long lenses. And in fact, in the bag, I've got the 200mm 2.8. Oh, yes, the new one. And the 100 to 400 in there. Oh, wow. And um, the, so they're not uncommon for photographers, stills photographers, to need to take photos at incredibly long lengths and when they do that they are currently on a current system would almost always have to have that on a tripod 
but uh, and they're very very big heavy lenses yeah and norm and that's half the reason they have to be it's just physically yes. impossible to hold it for any and i've held a lot of large dslr lenses they're like bazookas yeah it is real. i i <laughs> i shot a, i used to shoot a lot of aircraft that sounds really bad <laughs> um and but i used to holding big you cannot hold those big lenses the the particularly the big primes this is designed the image stabilization system is designed to six and a half stops out to 280 mil on any and so clarify that 280 mil on any panasonic lens on a third party lens it'll go out to about 120 150 mil and it and it's six and a half stops that's brilliant so and that's because stills photographers need different things from the image stabilization system it has a knock on effect though that the if you're using it for video you get that same stabilization it's brilliant and and that actually it's one of the times where before we had gh5 that had great stills capability because of the video side and because of the design this has a side effect for the video because of the stills capability and that's the image stabilization yes similarly and on this particular camera i haven't been able to test this very well so far um the autofocus is is improved and this particular camera is quite an early pre-production and I have not been able to test the autofocusing very well on this. Yeah. I know that some of my colleagues who've got slightly later ones, it seems to be working a bit better. But this particular one, it's one of the things that this particular camera isn't doing very well at the moment. I get you. So uh, if we tried to play with it on here, this one probably we would not yeah. play very well. Um, but as we get more cameras out, it'll be more obvious that yeah. the autofocus, the continuous autofocus is more optimised. Brilliant. On this. Going back to the image stabilization yeah. for a moment, because yeah. the GH5 has been really well supported with its firmware yes. upgrades, yes. lots of yes. new modes and features yes. and exactly. exciting things. Yes. Is that something <laughs> that the GH5 might get? Can they get that extra one and a half stop stabilization, which they may or may not need? But yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know is the sure. very honest answer to that. I don't know, and I'm waiting to find out from the engineers, whether... When they've tweaked the image stabilization system and when they've tweaked the things that they've tweaked for the G9, whether that is a mechanical, how mm. much of that is mechanical tweaking? If it's mechanical tweaking, it's very unlikely to come back onto the GH5. Yeah. And there are very big mechanical differences between these cameras, yeah. partly because of the whole heat thing. Um, so I don't know. And I don't know what they're going to be able to put back onto the GH5 yet. Hmm. And I'd love, because it's one of the questions I'm asked a lot, and I want to be able to answer. Okay. But at the moment, I haven't got an answer for that. I would love, if it's if it's software, if it's firmware, if they've been able to do something clever with the firmware, I'd love them to be able to go back. Hmm. But at the moment, as these are still so new, hmm. um, I haven't had from the engineers yet whether it's a mechanical yeah. or a software yeah. thing. And that also, things like the noise reduction, things like the uh, autofocus improvements i don't know how much of that is mechanical exactly so and it, right yeah so when we know a little bit more about that we may be able to get give more information so the gh5 <clears throat> is a really capable stills camera yes fantastic Absolutely. i shot weddings on it all the, all this summer brilliant so um i used it i didn't use it for video yeah. i used it for stills <laughs> right okay well, so, there you go um, and I don't do many weddings now but I did do weddings on mm. it this summer and um, and shot other things with it as a stills camera so the what about the the actual appearance because yes. the sensor's the same yes what about the appearance yeah. of a JPEG yeah. on the G9 versus completely different really yes right okay let's so again the GH5, the JPEG rendering was extremely good, but again, mm. because the camera is designed primarily for video, yep. they had done a lot of work to the JPEG rendering, but it still um, there were still some comments about things like skin tone and things like okay. that. Much, much, much improved over earlier cameras for the mm. JPEG. Um, and I have given a lot of the JPEGs straight out. And in fact, um, I probably shouldn't say this to the people that I did their weddings for. Um, yeah. But uh, um, a number of the images they got 
were JPEGs from the camera because Share I didn't, camera. although I had shot all the RAWs, I didn't need to process the RAWs because the JPEG was absolutely fine. Brilliant. Which is great for me as workflow. Oh, good. Yeah. And, and that, again, is one of the big differences here in that because they don't have to think so much about the video side of things... Here, they've done a lot of work to the JPEG engine because pe the sort of core customer for this is going to shoot a lot of JPEG. If you're a sports photographer, if you're a journalist, if you're a wildlife photographer, you're very often not going to want to spend an awful lot of time playing with raw files. Mm. You're going to need to get that JPEG straight out there. Absolutely. So this JPEG engine renders the skin tones differently. Okay. It does more with the background, um, so grading of skies, that sort of thing, is all much more sophisticated, I okay. would say, is the way to okay. put it. Um, again, similarly with noise reduction. Okay. So noise reduction on the GH5 is all about, particularly in the video side, about stopping that horrible moving noise, which I didn't even know existed. I'm a stills photographer. Um, stills photographers want don't want to damp out all of the detail because you only get one shot, one frame. Mm. So you want to see the detail. So they're a, a little bit more comfortable with the noise as long as the noise contains detail. So things like you're able to see hair and things like that. So my hair, if you ever try to photograph this hair, <laughs> it has a lot of detail going on. <laughs> sure. <laughs> if it was up at 6,400, You'd gain more detail out of this than you would out of the GH5. Right. I get you. Okay. So even the noise so retains it, it, more yes, detail, is yes, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. and you, it's also more manipulatable, if that's a word. Well, um, it is now. <laughs> I'm good at those. So it's really, really cool. Fastest autofocus, um, largest viewfinder, um, uh, fastest uh, burst rate in electronic shooting, so a huge number of new things, but very specifically around stills photographers. Yes, that's incredible. So, yeah. So I think I think they're all the major things I can think about. I'm yeah. sure someone's going to come on online and go, you didn't talk about. Oh. <laughs> but there's so much to talk about. There this is. is the thing. But, and, and I could happily, you know. I mean, anyone that knows me and has been around me with these cameras knows that I can talk about these cameras till the cows come home yeah. with all the little bits and pieces within them. Um but for me as a stills photographer, GH5 is a fantastic stills camera and I would never, ever not use it as a stills camera. Mm -hmm. But this one speaks to me. Okay. And I knew it would. That's I knew as, as soon as they said that they were producing one. Right. Um, and I've been very clear. I've always said I love the GH5, but I would probably never buy a GH5 because I'm a stills girl. Yes. This gives me what I need. That's wonderful. So it's like Christmas for you. It is. No, it seriously is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I've been very, very happy testing this one, and I've taken images on it that I haven't sort of. And it's funny because photography and filmmaking should always be about what's in your head, mm. and should not be held up by the tools. Mm -hmm. And I still I take fantastic images on any camera that I take because I'm a good photographer. I know my technology. I know how my settings and I'm creative. But actually, as soon as I've got this camera in my hand, a bit like GX80, actually, okay. I take better photos with this camera. Yeah. Bec it and GX80, GX8 as well, sorry, because they just sit well. That's it. It's, it's like what we, yeah. what we were saying earlier. Yes, it's yes. It's having that connection with the yes, camera. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I work with a lot of cameras. And I've worked with a lot of other cameras in the past. Mm. Um, and I've re I came to the Panasonic brand because I really liked what it was doing. But, and I, they've always said to me, yeah, there's going to be you know, proper high-end stills cameras. And GX8 came along and I'm like, oh, I love that camera. This has come along and it's kind of went right. Nailed it. Nailed We're it. We're here. I hear you. So, so what would you say to someone who's... Confused about getting one or the other. Yeah, they dabble in, yeah, in both. both. Yes, this is there is this middle. This yeah. is this these people. So I think if if what you want to do, if it, what is exciting you is film mm -hmm. and video, 
and you need the 10 bit or you need the unlimited recording, you need to go GH5. Sure. That makes sense. If you're like me, a hardcore stills photographer who's starting to do some video, <laughs> trying to do some video, uh, it's a no brainer that you go this way. Okay. For the people that are really sitting in the middle, then you really have to put it in your hand. I agree. You have to put it in your hand. You have to play with the dials and see where it fits you. Yes. And if you don't need unlimited recording, if you don't need 10 bit, then this will give yeah. you yeah. fantastic video. I think you, you, you summed it up very well yeah. there. I, if you are com still confused, you can research, you can look at specs, yeah. you can watch YouTube videos yeah. until your eyes go blind. <laughs> the best thing is to just relax. Yeah. Go to yeah. a camera shop when yeah. it's out. Yeah, and, and preview events. Yeah, and preview events. So we're doing lots and lots of preview events. We're at lots of different things. Exactly. Um, I am... Uh, my northern equivalent to me, Josh Cunningham, is our promoters are, and we're at, we're at all sorts. So on websites all mm. over the place, manufact our website, uh, retailer websites. There's lots of places you can see this before January. Mm. So so hunt them out. Yeah. Have a feel. Get hands on with both cameras. Yeah. And that's that's what happened to me. Mm. I was like all ready to kind of upgrade to the GH5. Yeah. yeah. And then I heard about this one. <laughs> Then I heard about the stabilization. Yes. And then I really started scratching my head. I did the research. Yes. I watched the videos. Yes. And when I held it in my hand, I was like, I, I didn't need to yeah. look at the GH5 anymore. My yeah. Like, I was more curious and it felt great. Yeah. And, I, and I'd made the decision yeah. once I got it in my hand. So yes. that's yes. the easiest thing to do, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, there are... There are uh, lots of places you can see it. There are pre-order deals as well, so there are lots of lots of incentives cool. with this as well. So, you know, have a play. And, and it's not you're not in a bad boat. You can't really no. go wrong with no. either one. No, no, that's I think that's the real thing yeah. here. Yeah, is that you could you know I could spend the next three four years happily shooting sure. weddings on a GH5, and if this hadn't come along, exactly what I yeah. would have done. Yeah. Pairing this with the GX8, I would have been very happy. Mm. Um, for me, as a stills, this literally sits exactly where I want a, a camera. But had it not come along, this would have still done an extremely good job. But so. we're happy it has come oh, along. Yeah. It's mine. <laughs> it's mine. No, 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 no. Cheers, Panasonic Pigeon. I'm out of here. Okay, I didn't really steal the G9. I wish I did. I was so close, but I didn't make it. That might have been a lot to take in. But what I want to stress is hold the camera, get it in your hand. You can watch as many YouTube videos until your eyes turn blue and you starve of malnutrition. Yes, make reference to the specs. But what camera are you going to use the most? What camera are you going to have fun using the most? Either way, you can't go wrong with the GH5 or the G9. But if you're a vlogger, like me, I'd go with the G9. Thank you very much, Carol from Panasonic. I had a great time. I had a wonderful time. I'll be back to steal another camera soon.